So a couple of days ago, my friend Unmesh from Pixinperfect shared a video showing how he used the generative fill artificial intelligence in Photoshop to fix a difficult selection. And this got me thinking, I wonder if generative fill AI in Photoshop could do a better job on that group portrait I took a few years ago when the client asked if I could make the large sofa look the same as the leather chair. Holy sh**. Now I have got to show you this. So a few years ago, I was asked to photograph a financial services company, which was without doubt the most challenging photo shoot I have had to date. And not just because it meant photographing a group of 21 people. For the photo shoot itself, we used an empty area on the top floor of their office building. However, the client was unable to get matching furniture. So during the shoot said that they ideally wanted the large sofa to match the leather chair. Now in the original edit, I did the best I could, firstly changing the color and then experimenting using the filter gallery in Photoshop to fake the look of leather, which kind of worked. Not an exact match, but the client was happy. And this is the final image that has then had some color grading and a final look added. But yesterday, when I was experimenting in Photoshop, I tried generative fill on the same group photo. I mean, I've seen it do a lot of things, but change furniture? So in Photoshop, here's the portrait where I've cropped it and you can see the gray paper on the back wall and floor. As I turn on each of the upper layers, you can see what I've done by tidying up the joins on the paper, adding texture to the back wall, adding in the wooden floor, and then eventually changing the color of the sofa. I'll explain why that needed to be done first in a minute, but now I need to make it look like leather. Okay, so let me just delete all of the layers above this one here where I've already made a selection and cut out of the sofa, which I had to do for the technique I used to match the color. When I zoom in, you can see how different the material looks compared to the leather on the chair. The leather has a texture and obvious highlights. So I'll hold down the command key on Mac or control key on Windows and click on the thumbnail of the sofa cutout and load it as a selection. Then in the contextual taskbar, I'm just gonna type the word leather. Now watch this. I'll click on generate and let's give the AI just a few seconds to figure out what it needs to do. And bam, look at that. That is just incredible. Of course, we can click on generate to get three more variations and give it a few more seconds. This one here I think is my favorite, but I just need to tweak the color a bit, so I'll add a hue and saturation adjustment layer. I'll also add a clipping mask so that the adjustments only affect the layer directly below. Then I'll adjust the hue a little, and then also the saturation. Maybe a bit more contrast is needed, so I'll add a brightness and contrast adjustment layer. I'll add a clipping mask, and then just increase the contrast a touch. Let's just put all of these layers here into a group so we can see a before and after. So this is the before and after following the color match, and this is a before and after of the original sofa. Amazing. Now at the moment, Generative Fill AI won't let me specify the exact color that I want the leather sofa to be. It'll only allow me to change it to leather, and that's why we needed to change the color before. For example, if I wanted this to be, I don't know, a black leather sofa, I'll just turn off these adjustments here and click on the Generative Fill layer, and then type in black leather. and these are the results it throws back. So the color needs to be changed first and then use the AI. But I get a sneaky feeling that in the near future, that'll change. But this quickly is how I match the colors of the furniture. Okay, so let's just delete everything above this point and then I'll just go to the original layer containing the yellow sofa at the bottom of the layer stack. I'll then load the sofa selection that I've made and now I have that selection I'll jump this onto its own layer by holding down the Command key on Mac or Control key on Windows and pressing J. I'll then put this at the top of the layer stack. 
Then let's zoom in and I'll grab the rectangular marquee tool and drag out a selection in this area here, kind of like a swatch. And I'll then hold down the command and option keys on Mac or the control and alt keys on Windows. Then keeping those keys down, I drag this selection across onto the leather chair. So if I can now change the color of this swatch so that it blends in with the leather chair, anything else on this layer will also change to the same color, which in this case is the yellow sofa. And this is how we do it. I'll deselect and go to the channels tab. Then click on the red channel and go to curves by pressing command on Mac or control on Windows and the letter M. And because we're on the red channel, that's how curves opens. And to blend the red values, we just drag this top right point downwards until the swatch blends in. Something like that. I'll then click OK and go to the green channel. I'll then go to curves by holding down the command or control key and M, and then drag the top right point down until that swatch blends in. OK, and finally the blue channel. So I click on that, open a curves adjustment, and then drag the top right down to around about there and click OK. So now all the channels are blended, let's go to the regular view by clicking on the RGB channel and then go back to the layers. We can get rid of the swatch now, so I'll just use the eraser and brush over it. But now look though, as I zoom out, how the color of the yellow sofa has changed. Of course, we can tweak it making some adjustments, but that's a great technique for matching colors in Photoshop. Now, since Generative Fill AI was introduced into Photoshop Beta, there's been a lot of discussion online about it replacing photography. And in one hand, I get it, but on the other hand, I don't. AI is not going to photograph these exact people, the people who work for this company and then create a portrait. That is photography, and for that, we need photographers. For me, this was a paid gig, and although the client at the time was happy with what I was able to give them, had Generative Fill AI been around back then, what I could have done would have been way better. So this is clearly an example of where AI is a help and not a hindrance. But anyway, we could discuss this for a long time. In this video though, all I wanted to do was show you what I found out purely by experimenting. So if any of this has been useful in any way, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up. And if you haven't yet, click on subscribe because that's just a great free way that you can support this channel. But for now, that's me, I'm done. I'll see you in the next video.